Hey folks, Alan Mandic the Hot Rod Hippie here. This week on Instagram, I've been posting pictures of the 55 Chevy Bel Air that I've been working on, namely the stainless hardline tubing work I've been doing on it. Folks asked, how is it you do that? Could you do a video about doing these bends, these intricate different designs? That's what this one is right here, right now. Let's check it out. A few quick notes, this is not a full beginning to end tutorial. I will be doing that, so subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with all my videos so you can see when I get around to that. I felt I needed to do an introduction here before I dove into a full beginning to end video. I didn't want to dive into the deep end and show you things that I didn't discuss previously. In this video, we're going to discuss why I use hardline tubing versus soft tubing, the tools that I use when I'm doing hardline tubing, and tips and tricks on how to do it hands-on, showing you things that I do when I'm bending lines. And lastly, I'll mainly be referring to stainless tubing throughout here, but this all applies to aluminum tubing, steel tubing, or copper tubing as well. So why hard line versus soft? Well, there's a few reasons. There's safety. If you're running a full hard line from beginning to end of your vehicle and you run down the road, run over a stick and it jumps up and hits that line, if it's a piece of rubber hose, it'd be a whole lot easier for that stick or that rock to go ahead and puncture a rubber hose than it would be to puncture a full hard tube. Another safety concern is routing of things, routing around things. Stainless or regular hardline tubing as you run it over things like a cross member, say I only have a half of an inch of clearance between this piece of tubing and that cross member. A year from now, I should still have a half of an inch of clearance around that cross member. If I run a piece of rubber fuel line over top of that thing, over time that will rub. It'll either rub the paint off of the cross member or rub a hole into the line so your fluid or your air will leak out of that. Another reason to run hardline over soft is resistance or friction. The inside of a piece of stainless braided or just regular rubber fuel line is rubber. It has grip to it, it has pores. It will actually grip onto whatever flows through it, whether it be air or fluids, it will eventually have resistance build up on it. So if you're pushing the fuel pump at the back of the car, pushing through an all rubber line to the front of the car, you've created more resistance than that pump needs to deal with if you're reusing say a piece of hardline tubing. The inside of this is smooth. It's not gonna create the resistance that a piece of rubber hose would create. And the last reason and most important reason in my world is aesthetics. I'm joking a little bit, but aesthetics is important. If you're using a hardline tube, it's bent up really nicely, it's gonna look darn good. You really can nail a vehicle and really take it to the next level with some really high quality stainless or hardline tubes in general. Let's go ahead and discuss the tools that I use when I'm bending up tubing. There's really nothing amazing or surprising in here, though I do have quite a bit of what I use and I do have some pointers about the specific tools that I use that I can recommend to you. So let's get through this. We've got a tubing cutter. Tubing cutter, straightforward, nothing special, cuts the tubing. It's very handy and exceptionally useful when you're cutting on tubing. Soft jaws for your vise. Now, I do use the soft jaws when I'm doing hard line tubing. There's a few situations where I use them and I will get to those later in this video in the tips and tricks section. Next up is flaring tools. Now, all I'm showing you here is a 37 degree flare tool and there is a reason for that. On stainless steel tubing I only ever use 37 degree flare. I've done a whole dedicated video about AN fittings and flaring hardline tubing so I'm not going to cover that in this video but suffice it to say that stainless steel is too hard to do a 45 degree double flare. It is meant to be a 37 degree single flare and that's what AN fittings are. Now the flaring tool I use is this very simple one I picked up from Matco years ago. I think it might be an imperial one. This thing is handy, it takes a lot of hand strength to use because when I'm using it on stainless steel, it takes a lot of effort. Really probably it's intended for soft tubing like aluminum or copper, but it still does get the job done on the stainless steel for my needs. A tool I recommend, but you don't need, however I use it all the time, is a tubing straightener. Personally, I buy tubing in rolls. So if I'm using a roll of tubing, it takes up less space, it's cheaper to ship, and it's generally more cost effective per foot than buying pre-cut lengths. All you have to do is roll it out by hand and feed it through the tubing straightener, slightly increasing the pressure as you go, and the rollers will actually help to straighten out that tubing as it feeds through the tubing straightener. Generally, I kind of rotate the tubing and do it from a couple different directions to get it as good as I want. If you apply too much pressure, it will eventually start to bow the piece and act as kind of a ring roller, so that's not what you want. Now let's go ahead and discuss the most important things when you're bending up hardline tubing, of course, that's benders. Obviously, you need good quality benders to do good quality bends. 
So the ones that I use are on display here. These are not all the ones that I have, but it does cover all the different styles that I have. The two in here that I use the least are probably the two that you are most familiar with. Those are the ones that have the multiple different grooves for different sizes of tubing. I rarely use these anymore. These are great for the softer tubing, whether it be aluminum, copper, and a little bit of the mild steel. These can work out really well for those. That's why they're really common on tool trucks for mechanic shops and they're bending up brake lines or fuel lines. This is what you're probably going to use. Now for the stainless tubing, they are just inadequate. They are not strong enough. The hook that hooks onto the tubing to hold it when you're bending, I've seen those break off before. I've also had the pivot point on the tool actually shear off while I was using it, so it freaking broke on me. Oh, now I'm out of bender. Now let's discuss the tubing benders that I actually use on a regular basis. These are the ones that I really like. They are the specific sized ones, the ones that are meant to work on a specific size of tubing that you're working with. I've got two different ones here. I've got the smaller quarter inch imperial one, and I've got the three eighths inch swage lock one. I find that these specific size ones are just superior. This quarter inch one, it costs about the same as that smaller multiple sized one because it's just stronger. It's made of steel. It's got stronger pivot points, stronger material making up the entire thing. And it's designed to work on one specific size of tubing so it can get into tighter places and it can just bend that single size better. Another thing I like about this bender that's really important to me is that if you actually look at it straight on looking down on the tool, you can see that the handles crisscross each other. They do not line up with each other. That is a really good thing. So as you're bending the tubing, if you're going for a 180, you can actually bend all the way around this tool and not have the handles interfere. Unfortunately, in this world, in my eyes, you should have as many of these different types of benders as you can, because you just never know when the situation is going to come up where one works better than another. Now, the type of bender that I'm switching to that I really like is the swage lock style of tubing bender. They have strong pivot points. They have re replaceable pivot points. You can disassemble them to either lube them up or clean them or repair them if need be. They're larger so that they can provide more leverage for the harder materials. They have the swing out leg on them that can actually lock the tubing in place. So that means you can put a piece of tubing into there, especially if you've got multiple bends right next to each other. It can make it easier to feed that piece of tubing into the bender than it would if it didn't have that leg that swings out of the way. And the biggest feature is that it has the rollers on the follower so that they don't leave as many tooling marks and they'll decrease the friction so that it actually makes it easier on you to bend the tubing. I do find these to just be superior in almost every way. Now that comes with a price tag. These things are pricey. I think new, the 3 8 inch ones I have here sell for like $250, $300. Now I have seen these cloned and copied by other companies. Rigid comes to mind, I know they do. So you can get them from other places. I've never used them to speak to the quality of them or the strength of them or the material materials that they use. They are substantially cheaper though. I think they run, range between like $100 to like $200 depending on the size you get. Now both of these benders I have modified to create a better bend for my needs. How I did that was I actually notched both of them in different ways so that I can get the flare of the tubing closer to the bend radius on the bender. On the swage lock one, I took a little notch out of the block at the end of it, just past the leg that holds the tubing in place. This allows me to get the tube sleeve closer in by about three eighths of an inch to the bend radius, meaning that I can come out of the fitting and turn quicker than I could if I hadn't modified this tool. On the imperial style one, I took a die grinder to the leg that holds onto the tubing and I notched it so that I can get that tube sleeve recessed into that leg again for the same purpose, though it doesn't allow as much of a difference on this one as it does on the swage lock style. There's one more type of bender that I could make a quick note of. The folks at Trick Tools have this one. It's a stand mount one. You actually mount it to the floor or to a bench and you can go ahead and bend the tube around, kind of like a, a ring bender for blacksmith work would be, but it has the guide so you don't kink your tubing. Really interesting. I have seen it in operation. I do like the idea. I do like the design. I will pick one up eventually. For now, I'm sticking to the handheld ones because I just don't have the space for that unit myself. Okay, now let's go ahead and discuss tips and tricks, how to stuff about bending tubing. Probably the biggest thing that I can teach you is this right here. This is a piece of aluminum TIG welding wire, eighth inch thick. So what do I use this for? Mock-up. I will bend an entire line in this material before I ever bend it in a piece of stainless steel hard line. This allows me to fully visualize what I'm trying to do because I can see it in the situation and go, you know what? I don't like the way that's looking or you know what? It might interfere in a place I didn't realize it was going to interfere with. So rather than ruining a perfectly good piece of stainless, I can just use this cheaper, lighter, and easier to work with piece of aluminum 
to go ahead and mock that up. Now, obviously when you're working a piece of eighth inch TIG wire, if you're working with 3 16 or quarter inch tubing, it's gonna be much more accurate than it will be if you're working with half inch, 3 8 or 5 16 tubing. However, I do still find it useful when I'm doing those larger tubes. Next tip is kind of two together, which is go slow and mock up on the car to check your work. So as you're going with a piece of tubing, if you think it needs to be a 45 degree bend, I'll generally go to like a 30 degree bend and then I'll check it on the car. And I'll realize, you know what, if I went 45, it would have been too far, but 30 is not quite enough. I need to go just a little further, split the difference. Checking it on the car allows me to go ahead and see where it needs to be as I'm working with it. Bend slowly, bend less than you think you need to before you get to that point, because it's a lot easier to bend more than it is to unbend a piece. Unbending. Unbending is not something anybody should really recommend, I don't think. I definitely don't think the manufacturers of these pieces would tell you that you should unbend, but I do do it at least a little bit. I don't push it more than say five, maybe 10 degrees, but I will do this from time to time. What I'll do is I'll take the soft jaws that I talked about earlier, I'll put them in my vise, They've got the groove in the middle of them. I'll put the angle of that bend into that groove, the legs coming out sticking into that groove as well, and I'll tighten the vise just a little bit and it will slightly unbend that angle. Do not do this much. You could either stress the tubing or you could kink the tubing doing this or you'll put bows in the legs of the tubing. It's not something you should rely on, but once in a while you can get away with it. Another thing you may find useful, something I probably shouldn't even tell you, is using your hands. Sometimes grabbing onto a piece of tubing and just twisting it into the position it needs to be in can really save a tube. It can really make that thing you might have had to scrap otherwise work. This is obviously much easier on the softer tubing than it is with say stainless. Even I have pretty decent grip strength and I find it very difficult to do on stainless, but on aluminum it's very easy to do. So you need to be careful with how much you do this. Now another tip that is something I haven't been doing for very long, it's kind of a new thing for me and I don't know why I didn't think of this sooner, was making gauges. What I mean by this is I cut off short sections of tubing. I marked my zero point where I was going to put it into the bender and have it start and then I bent to different angles. Say I take 3 8 inch, I bent 45, 30 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees and I mark where on that piece of tubing that end of that angle is as well. This allows me to mock up tubing in all kinds of situations to figure out where I need it to be. Sometimes as you're running along, maybe you need to take a turn and go into a bulkhead fitting. That can be very difficult to figure out exactly where you need to start that bend. So much quicker and easier is taking this piece of tubing that I created as a gauge, holding it up where it needs to be, lining it up with, next to the tubing that I'm working with, lining it up with the fitting it's trying to go into, and marking on the tubing where I need that bend to start. This has been a game changer for me to get the bends where I need them to be. Why I never thought to make these gauges sooner, I do not know, but I'm gonna be keeping a handful of these in my toolbox in different sizes for future projects so I can go ahead and use these to just help me along the way. And one last important tip is to remember that failures happen. You will make mistakes. These all here are mistakes. Things that just didn't turn out the way I wanted or needed them to and didn't end up on the car. So always factor in having extra material to make your mistakes because you're going to make mistakes no matter who or what you are. All right, folks, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. It ended up being a little bit longer than I expected it to be because there's just more information here once I dove into it than I thought I had to impart to you to begin with. It's the way it goes sometimes. Go ahead and drop this video a like if you found it interesting. Let me know in the comments down below if there's anything you think I should check out, some bender or something I might be interested in, please let me know in the comments down below. Check out the Patreon account, patreon.com slash hippie that directly supports this channel, really helps me bring these videos to you folks. Subscribe to keep up to date with all the content every week. I'm gonna have some more tubing videos coming for you. Thanks for coming around, folks.